Okay, um, on this video uh, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about the brief history of macroeconomics. Um, so macroeconomics started and was born out of the Great Depression of the United States and the rest of the world in the 1930s. Um, basically, the economy, a brief uh, you know, summary, the, the economy was coming out of the 1920s, uh, the so-called Roaring Twenties. Um, stocks were going up, the economy was growing, everything was going great until uh, the famous uh, uh, stock market crash of 1929. Uh, where economy ent entered a severe recession, uh, unemployment went up to 20%, people couldn't find jobs, factories were empty, and it really created a problem uh, and um, it, 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 it challenged the understanding of economics up until that point. So up until um, um, that, that moment, um, in the history of economic thought, we're coming out of uh, you know the, the ideas of classical economists. Starting, you may have heard about Adam Smith, David Ricardo, people like that. Who um, essentially um, you can you can summarize the basic view up until that point in the notion of the invisible hand of the market. And essentially, the invisible mar hand of the market, what it says is that when people are left to their own devices and pursue their own self-benefit, interact freely uh, through the market system they will achieve uh, what is socially uh, optimal for society. And in particular, uh, what this means in terms of the economy as a whole is that if there's a problem, such as uh, unemployment goes up, that will be self-regulated by the market. In other words, the economy is a self-regulating system. It doesn't require any intervention from the government or any outside sources. So in other words, there is no room for um, economic policy on part of the government. The government should just stay away from the economy and let the economy naturally adjust. What is the system by which the economy adjusts? Essentially, if there is a lot of unemployment, people find it a hard time uh, uh, finding jobs, then employers end up offering lower wages, and, and through lower wages, the cost of production goes down, so prices tend to go down, and through that reduction in prices, uh, yeah, it uh, makes people's income uh, have more purchasing power. People can buy more things through, because of lower prices, and that uh, uh, gives an economy a little boost. Companies start hiring again, and we essentially uh, come out of our little uh, economic recession or downturn. Um, and so that was the prevailing view up until the 1930s. But what changed during the Great Depression was essentially at that point, the recession was not going away. 1930, 1931, 1932, 1933, four years, the economy was still not showing any signs of uh, recuperating as uh, it was previously believed it would happen. And so this challenged the view that the economy was a self-regulating system. And so at this point, enter the picture uh, Keynes, uh, which some, is attributed by some people as the savior of capitalism, because essentially what Keynes said at that point was like he realized the economy was stuck uh, in what sometimes uh, can be uh, referred to as a trap or a uh, liquidity trap. Essentially, he pointed out um, the importance of people's expectations in economy. If people expect that they're not going to have any income in the future and the economy is not going to be uh, doing well, there's not going to be any customers, firms are not going to hire, people, if, if they anticipate bad economic times, uh, even w independently of whether that happens to be the case or not, what's going to happen is they spend less. If you think you're going to be fired from your job tomorrow, you're going to save some for the rainy day. And so uh, essentially uh, what, does, uh, what that it creates is a, uh, what economists refer to as a self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, when people start believing that the economy is not going to do well, they don't spend when people don't spend, firms have no customers, the restaurants don't have anybody, the shoe stores, the, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. And then they, uh, those, those uh, firms fire their, their, their employees or, or lay them off or whatever, and, and people, unemployment rises, and it becomes a self-fulfilling uh, 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 belief. People believe the economy is not going to do well, and because they respond with their action to that belief, that actually leads to their belief being true, and the economy uh, being stuck. And what that meant for the 1930s is that you have a situation that really challenged this notion that the market economy operates at an efficient level, because if you think about it, 
the economy was operating way below its productive capacity. You have shoe factories sitting empty with no workers. You have workers sitting outside unemployed looking for a job. You have a productive factory not operating. You have productive workers not producing any goods and services. Why is the, f the firm not hiring, the shoe factory not hiring any employers? Because nobody's buying shoes. Why is nobody buying shoes? Because the, the people don't have a job, and so they don't have any money to buy shoes. And all you need to do is bring the workers into the factory. Once the workers get a job, they're going to buy new shoes. If they buy new shoes, the firm will have customers. So you can see how this circularity was creating a problem. And what Keynes said was to solve this, we're now stuck in, in a situation that is inefficient. And to solve this, the government is to intervene. The government is the only one who can intervene. How can it intervene? Well, essentially, it needs to put some money into the workers' pockets so they buy new shoes. Once they buy new shoes, the shoe factory is going to hire workers, and we're going to get out of this uh, kind of situation of uh, economic depression that we're stuck in. Without the government intervention, we wouldn't be able to step out. And Keynes wasn't very specific about um, how uh, we should go about doing this. Essentially, he said, it doesn't matter. The government should just hire people. You could hire people to dig a hole in the ground and then hire the same people to cover it up. It doesn't have to be productive. All it needs to do is to boost spending. Okay, And, um, and for example, in the United States, politicians listened to the advice of Keynes uh, through the presidency of Roosevelt. It, there was something, um, an economic plan called the New Deal, which essentially boosts economic spending by a lot. The government spend more money, put money in people's pocket. People have more money now. They go and spend, buy new shoes, buy new clothes, go out, eat in restaurants. Those firms now have more customers, and the economy slowly uh, recuperates. And so uh, that basically uh, became the new view that now there was a role for economic intervention. And essentially, um, this view uh, evolved uncontested. <clears throat> up until the 1970s. And up until the 1970s, there came this new economic uh, crisis that challenged this view of uh, Keynesian uh, uh, economics, which was the oil crisis. Essentially, what happened in the 1970s was all the oil-producing countries got together and said, hey, if we all get together, instead of flooding the market with oil, we can all assign each other. We're all going to produce just a little bit oil, and if we create a shortage the price of oil is going to increase by a lot. And in doing that, they make a big increase in the price of oil, the price of energy. Energy is an essential input in the production of many goods. When you go to buy bread, you're essentially buying a product that is made out of flour and energy and so on. And so that increased cost of production all over the economy. And what we saw was a situation where prices were going up and unemployment was going up at the same time. If you think about the Keynesian model we just discussed in that context, Basically, um, when the economy is stuck in that trap and nobody's spending, because there are no customers, prices tend to go down. But in the 1970s, what we were observing was something that was challenging that, that Keynesian view. The economy is in recession, unemployment is going up, and we have inflation at the same time. And so uh, their uh, new views <clears throat> of macroeconomics came in the picture. Um, we'll discuss some of those views later in the course. Um, I think for now uh, we have enough for our introduction. Thank you for watching.